Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Today I want to show you how to set up and manage your Google Classroom. I want to show it from the teacher view and also to show you what the students will see in this. So let's get started with Google Classroom today here on Teachers Tech. To see what's included in this video, just take a look at the description down below. I'm also going to put timestamps, which allow you to jump to different parts of this video. So if you're looking for something specific, just click on the number and it will jump to that part of the video. So, but now let's just start with how to access our Google Classroom. And there's a few different ways to do this. Now, the way I tend to go uh, is just going up to the uh, up to top to the Google launch here, these nine little squares, the apps, and you can see Google Classroom is right here. And if if you have it lower down remember you can drag these all around so if it's something you're accessing quite a bit uh, you can go ahead and do that way and then just go and click on it and it will open up Google Classroom the thing I wanted to point out right here is you could just type Google if you're logged in and I was already logged in to my account so you do need to be logged in to access Google Classroom uh, but you can see classroom.google.com will get you to the same place too so you could type that in the other way how I like to do this is and something to note is whether you're on iOS or Android just simply um, open up uh, install the app on your um, on your on your phone and then you'll be able to do all the same things that I show you on a computer you'll be able to do the exact same thing on your app and this works very uh, very good to be um, adding information uh, by just having your phone so check out that app too but now so we have our Google Classroom here and the first thing that we're gonna do is just to uh, create a class and you can see right up here where the plus symbol is create or join a class so this is where students are going to join the class here and this is where we're going to create our class so I'm just going to create a class here I'm going to go create class and at this point I'm just going to name it teachers tech uh, and we'll just call this demo and go ahead and hit create you can fill out sections subjects room uh, you can go back and edit this at all times too uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit create so we have a class to work with and it will create this class and then after it's created all that we're gonna do is make some changes inside of it now this is pretty much you know you're gonna see all your classes look this way but we can customize this too. And if you wanna start at the beginning to customize, or you can do this later too, you can see how there's a picture right here. Well, we can go and select a theme or upload a photo. So maybe you wanna put a photo of your class or whatever it is, uh, you can upload a photo. But if I just go and select theme, you can see I can go through and pick kind of a general theme like this. I could go to English or history. Um, I'll just go back to general. You can look at different ones on it. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick this one right here and I'm gonna hit select theme and you get to see how the th uh, theme changes. Now, when we're manage managing Google Classroom, take a look up top right here. You can see uh, where these three lines are. We can go back to our classes. I'll explain some of these things a little bit later. But if I go to classes, this is the class that we just created. And this is where they're all gonna get created. As you create more classes, there's gonna be more to fill in here. And you can see, if I click these three little dots here, we can edit, we can go back and click the edit and change uh, this part right here, what I showed you before on it. And if you go back where you can copy and archive also. So now that we have a class set up, let's start looking at what else we can do with it. Okay, so for this section, I wanna show you how you can add students to your class. I'm gonna go back into my class that I created here. And at this point, now, I'll, the way I usually do it in front of a class, if I have this open and showing them, you see there's this class code right here. And what I can be doing, if they're live in front of me, I'm just gonna hit this little display, and I just tell them to type down this code, and then they can join the class. Remember, at the beginning, they would have to hit the join, then enter this code. The other way I could do, I could just uh, copy, copy this uh, class code and send it in an email from here. And if you don't like this class code, what you can do is go over to the settings here. And if I scroll down for a little bit, you can see that there's the class code. Here it is right here, same one. If I click on this one, I could copy it from here too, but I can reset it if you want a different one, or I can even disable it if I don't want any more students to come in. So remember that uh, in the settings. So I'm just gonna go out of this one. 
The other way that uh, you can do this, and this gives an invitation to the students, if I go up to people up here, and you can see there's students, and this is where I would invite other teachers. So if you are collaborating, if there's another teacher that you're working with in this class, you can add them here. But if we're adding students, if I go ahead and hit the plus here, and I'm just gonna start typing um, this. So we have a demo one here, and I'm gonna give an invite, and then that student will get an invite in their email, then they'll have to click it, and then they'll be accepted from it, and then we'll have students in our class. So what does it look like for the student? Well, there's a couple different ways. They're gonna get in their email a place to join. But the other thing, once you invite them through the invite process, they'll get this. So right now I'm logged in as one of the students I invited, and you can see they can either decline or join. Now, the other way I mentioned, now that you can see it's joining and then this person's part of that class. Now, if I go over and go to a different one, the other way to join is if I hit the plus and then that's where the class code is entered. So that's where I would enter the class code that I had uh, that was being displayed. I could either send that or just show it in class and hit join and then that person will be part of the class. So those are the different ways the students can join the class and what they're gonna see through that process. So now I'm back in my teacher's account here and you can see now they're not grayed out anymore. These people have accept, uh, accepted and I can invite guardians now. So I can click on this and I can put in the emails of the guardians and then they'll, they'll, get, uh, they'll get a place to sign up to be able to say how often they want to uh, see the information, uh, knowing when assignments are. And you can also email students from right here. So if I click these three little dots, I can go to email students and I can send them um, a, a direct message from here. So it makes it an easy way to manage everything right inside Google Classroom. So I'm back in the teacher's site now, and I wanna discuss the stream. Now the stream is gonna be your first tab here, and it's what you're gonna see down below here. Now this is where you communicate with your class. You're not gonna be giving assignments in the stream. It's gonna be maybe announcements, and you can give attachments of files to things from Google Drive, or a website, or even a YouTube video. So to do this, you, what you can do is just click in here, and I'll just say, uh, that uh, welcome just give a welcome message so I'll just say welcome and this would go uh, out to now we have a couple options do you want it to go out to all students or do you want to go to select students so you can choose if this is uh, going to everybody or to select students now this is where you can add so right down here, we can go add, and do we want this to be a link, a file, a YouTube video? So if I was gonna go to maybe uh, a Google Drive, it would open up something in my Google Drive, and I'll just grab a video from my Google Drive on this one. So now I have one more option here. I can go here, I can schedule it or save it as a draft, which means I can go back later and post it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and post this and let's move over to the view what the student would see on this one right now. So now I'm logged in as one of the students and this is their view so it's not changing a lot on this one but now students can comment back on this one too. And notice they can write something up here also. And now I'll show you in a moment, uh, you might not wanna give that much uh, opportunity for students to write right away. Maybe you wanna kind of teach them about it and what to kind of the appropriate things to uh, communicate in here. And I'll show you where that option is. But if a student was, uh, I'll just say, wow, and was to write something here and then send it back, I'm gonna move back over to the teacher view here now I'm back in the teacher view, you can see here's the comment here. Now we do have some options here. If I go back here, you can I can reply to this comment, but look at this, I could either delete or mute this comment from Ashton, maybe if it was inappropriate. Now the settings I was talking about, maybe you wanna to limit to how much they can communicate this way, because I've opened it up before and sometimes students will just write random things in it and you can go through and delete these two. But uh, if I go up to the settings here 
and I'm just going to go down a little bit here and here's the stream. Now if we look, students can post and comment, students can only comment, only teachers can post or comment. So this might be something you want to think about inside the stream of how you want to manage it. Okay, so now we're going to move over to classwork right here. This is where you're going to put your assignments, maybe material prior to any assignments like course outlines or website links or videos that you know they can access again and again that you're commonly using. But uh, so what I like to do first, now I'm going to go to this button right here and hit this create. Uh, in my mind, how I organize things, and this could be different, you can do this in different orders. Uh, you could create your material first and then assign the topic after. But I'm going to go to topics and a lot of times in my mind, I'm thinking the topics first and so maybe I have uh, resources on this one. So I'll, I'll have a topic of resources. I'm going to create uh, one more to time. I'm going to go back to topic again and I'm just going to create uh, material. So just to, to give a couple examples. So I have a couple topics so far. Now I want to add things into uh, these places. So I'm going to go up to create again and this time I'm going to click on material and this is where I get to create uh, maybe I want a course outline or something so I'm just say outline I could type some info whatever I want into here and I can go ahead and add so I click the add button for me a lot of times what I do is I keep things in my Google Drive but if it was on my computer and I needed to upload a PDF I could do that uh, YouTube file uh, but I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, add from Google Drive and just as an example here uh, these are you know even if it says assignments on it this is just a course outline ignore the assignment on it but uh, this could be my course outline and I could go ahead and hit uh, create or I could add something else. So maybe there's a video that I want uh, as part of it, maybe an intro video I created. I could go through and search, or I could go to, if I knew the URL, if I go over to a YouTube video, so if I wanted them to know how to use Google Meet, um, I could go back and I could just paste this right in here and add it. So now I have a document from my Google Drive and a video from YouTube. Now, if you look over here, you know, is it for uh, all students? Is it for, you know, I could individualize making sure if you were, uh, you know, if you wanted different students to get different material, you could do that. I want all students on this one. Now my topic, I'm going to say these are mat it's material and it's going to be applied to that topic. So I can go ahead and hit post and it goes ahead and post it. So you can see right here I have material and I can go back in and I can click these three dots. Whenever you see the three dots, you can see where you can delete, I can rename if I go into this again um, and I can go through and adjust things right from here. So always check for those three dots of, of what you can do uh, to dive a little deeper. So I'm gonna go back uh, just to my all my topics here. I'm gonna create one more and this time I'm gonna go to material. So maybe Maybe there's some website links that I want so I'll just say websites and um, I'll just type info again and I'm gonna go say add and this time I just want to use a link maybe I'm doing Tinkercad some 3d design and I'm just gonna copy this link from this website go back and paste it over here add the link and then I could be working with maybe we video I can be copying this and go back and add multiple ones again so I can go add another link and just I'll control V this time add link and I get multiple links in it so again where do I want this to go I want this to go to resources this time and I'm gonna hit post and it's the same options you know for later or save as draft if you want to go back and edit it later but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit post and now I'm just going to jump over to the students view so you can see uh, what happened with them. All right, so I'm logged in as the student now. You can see material, resources, and they can click on the resources. You've given them websites to go to, and then they can just click on them, and it's gonna open up and go to that site. So it makes a nice way to manage, making sure students are getting to the right websites, they have the right material. Remember, they can access this on their phone, uh, and it's great to be able to keep everything organized. Okay, so now I'm going to go and create an assignment. And to do that, we go up to the create here under the classwork. I'm going to hit create and assignments right here. 
I'm going to do a vi different video on quizzes, uh, the quiz assignment in question here. Uh, so when I'm done that, check the link down below in the description uh, and I'll be able to link you to that. But for now, I'm just sticking to the assignment one and I'm going to click on this and this assignment is going to be about cloud. So I'm going to keep this pretty uh, straightforward and simple. You'd write your instructions here. What do you want them to do? You know, whether they're creating a Google, Google Slides or maybe they're making a video, you can uh, tell them what they need to do here. So I'm just going to be pretty general and just type info again. I'm going to go ahead and add some information to this one. So I'm going to go hit add. Uh, this time I do want to give them a another link uh, from right here. It's just this cloud one. So I'm just going to go control C and over and then control V to add my link. So they're going to use this maybe as resources. I might put that in my instructions. I'm going to add this time, I'm going to go and grab a document out of my Google Drive. So uh, I've started a document. It's going to be types of clouds here. And their assignment is to track the different types of clouds that they see during a month, maybe taking pictures of it and then listing the characteristics, what makes them sure that it's that type of cloud. Now, an important thing before we go ahead and hit assign and pick a topic for it, an important thing to know is this right here. So it says students can view the file. Now that means when you send it out like that, students will be able to uh, view the file and that's all. They won't be able to edit it. So if you just want them to be able to read the assignment and maybe they're creating something else, that's the option that you would choose there. Students can edit the file. So if this was something collaborative, maybe the assignment is that all students list the type of clouds under this one document. It will create that one document for them and everybody collaborates together. Um, so you don't want to do that if you're uh, giving out maybe a, a worksheet that you don't want people to change. And if you give that, they'll be able to change the original one on that. So be careful if you pick that one. Now, this is one I tend to do a lot is to make a copy for each student. So this will give them an individual individual copy to create uh, each in their own drive so they'll have it to work from. And that's the one I'm going to choose from here. Now I have the option again, if I uh, go over here, since I only have the one class to choose from what I created, if I had different classes, I could drop down there. But all students, again, differentiating from what students maybe get different assignments, you could do that. The points, you can see if it's ungraded or a point system here. Uh, due date, I'm gonna, so if we go ahead and put a due date on it, you can see we just drop down uh, and I can pick a date on it and the topic. Now I haven't created a topic for this and I showed you how to create the topics from uh, prior before, but if I was, I can create a topic when I'm creating um, the assignment or material too. So if I was just gonna call this, you know, I'll just say science, now I keep going down below, rubric. I'm gonna do a different video on this one too, explaining the rubric a bit, a bit more. So again, look for the link down below and uh, I'm gonna leave everything like this. I'm gonna assign it right away. I don't need to say, say this as a draft. I'm gonna go ahead and hit assign on this one. So now what I'm gonna do is switch over to the student view so you can see what they get out of the assignment. Okay, so I'm over in the students view now and I've opened up, you can see there's the clouds one, here's the material. We have the view the assignments, they can go to the link here. I'm gonna click on view the assignment um, and you can see some options that they get, that they can turn it on, but we haven't done anything um, on it yet too. So a lot of times, I'm just gonna go back a screen. If they go ahead and open the document here, remember it created a copy for all the uh, different students. So if they were going to go through and write uh, whatever they want about the clouds, when they're done, what they need to do is hit turn in. So then they can hit turn in, and then this is the better way of getting them to uh, create, uh, you know, create their own. Uh, they won't get that turn in option at the end, but if you create the document to start with, that turn in will be there. I'm just gonna say, got it on here. And we're gonna say one attachment will be submitted to the clouds, turn in. And then, so they're gonna go ahead and turn that in. So at the point where it's submitted, you can see students have the option to unsubmit it too. So if they need to make changes or maybe you suggest that they make changes on it, they can go ahead and unsubmit it before there's any marks or anything. Now they could go through and work on this document some more. They can also add other documents. So they could add, maybe they did create something from their Google Drive. They didn't start the assignment right. They can go ahead and just add it from their Google Drive or from a link or file, or they could create uh, the document that 
need they need it from right here so they have some options of how they want to do that there's also a private commons place where you can go back and forth with the teacher on it but let's just move across and see what these assignments look like for the teacher so I just wanted to point out as you post your assignments and different material this does come up on the stream and this is what uh, the students see also. Also when we go over to classwork you can change you can drag these around and put these in different order if you do want to change it around so I just thought I'd mention that. But let's go to this assignment uh, now and you can see right now two turned in so I went through as the students and I turned in two for them so if I go ahead and just click on the two assignments I can see the two students that have turned it in here and when I go ahead and click on them and this is what I like how Google uh, Classroom has changed uh, this can save you a lot of time uh, I can go through and so you can see there's Ashton here but I can click on this and I can switch to the other students so I don't have to have all these tabs opened across the top and even if, I've, if I'm in like Google Slides and different things I can switch in here and it shows that this is turned in so when you go through and want to give a little bit more uh, this is where you give your marks to if you're marking in here uh, you can see we have a few different options where we can open in this in a new window if we want but we have our grades right through here if I find those three uh, little dots you can I can change the total points of this we can add our private comments also in this one so I'll just give this kind of a random grade here if I was grading on a percent uh, style but you'll see where this goes to um, as I said in the different one I'll talk about the rubric where that might match your assessment needs a little bit better uh, if we have comments here I haven't added any comments to the bank here but you can make a comment bank here so if I go to add bank uh, we could go through and uh, I'll just be quick here and we can add these comments that we could go through uh, and you can again we can copy them to the clipboard and whenever you see those three dots you can always get to more things now I could quickly go to the you can see the marks here I'm just gonna go to the other one and I'm gonna quickly give this a mark over here we'll say 95 and now I'm just gonna go and you can see the marks are both there different ways that I can sort and when I look at the top here, if I'm ready, you can see it's not returned. I can return this submission or return uh, multiple submissions, but uh, I'll go both here. And I can select all the different students that are there and go ahead and return. Uh, and just before I go to the students, uh, the students view one more time, I just wanna show you a different way that you can go through. I'm just gonna go back to this one. I'll just go back to my classes open this up if we go over to uh, people again here are my students if I click on one of these students like this uh, you can see uh, the different information that this has been returned there's a mark I can see there's a comment on this one what I really like about this view I can uh, quickly see if there's something missing if something's turned in or not and you can just scan each student so you go to their name and look down the list and you can see there's a filter here uh, that you could look up so again quick way to get information I'm just gonna go back and the grades go uh, right in here so it's like a grade book uh, whether or not you use Google Classroom uh, for that maybe it's just more of an organization but they do uh, they will collect the grades across here so let's just go over to the students one last time so you can see what they're seeing with the return grade all right, so I'm back here in the students. I'm just in the assignment. Uh, the mark is up top. There was a private comment that I wrote back to it. And there's even a resubmit in here. So maybe the comments are maybe resubmitting and then you can regrade it after that. Uh, so just uh, this has been a kind of a general overview to get you started if you haven't used Google Classroom to see all the possibilities uh, that you can do. It works great again with the mobile apps. Everything works the same. Students get notified when you send out that assignment uh, if they have notifications on their devices. So it works very smoothly. Like I said I am going to put some more videos. I'll create a playlist of all the different things that you can do inside Google Classroom but hopefully this gets you started using this uh, if effectively and efficiently. Thanks for watching this time on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.